Tornadoes leaving a trail of destruction across parts of Missouri. The state capital, Jefferson City, one of the hardest hit areas. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Claire Kellett. We want to get right to the latest information that we have. There are no deaths reported in Jefferson City, but there were three people killed by a tornado in southwestern Missouri. The National Weather Service is surveying the damage right now and preliminarily says there is EF3 damage. And the survey team estimates the top wind speeds peaked at 160 miles per hour. We do have live team coverage with crews in Jefferson City, and we are also checking out the impact right here in the St. Louis area. We made a map to show you some of the hardest hit areas. If you are familiar at all with Jefferson City, you know that the capital is right on the Missouri River. Well, there is damage just east of the capital and then south along US 54. The tornado destroyed several homes and apartments throughout Jefferson City. News Force Emma Hogue joins us live from Jeff City. And Emma, you've been talking with people who survived the storm late last night, and today they're now trying to pick up the pieces. Let me tell you, the damage out here is pretty incredible. You can't walk more than a foot without coming in front of some form of destruction. Right now, I'm on the second floor of this building. You can see this was a brick wall just collapsed by that tornado. Take a look. We're talking huge chunks of brick now scattered throughout this unit. I want to draw your attention over to the corner of the home. You can see a child's closet there. Moments ago, we spoke with the woman who lived here. She was moved to tears just about how emotional this experience has been. When the storm ripped through, she was actually at a neighbor's house just across the street, but she was gathering her things. I saw pictures, clothing, just really a tough experience for a lot of people out here that lost so many belongings. And that's what people have been doing all day. We talked with some folks that are now down to suitcases and trash bags filled with clothes. Everything. Cars, buildings, windows, you name it. Everything was damaged. This afternoon, people like Ian Ramsey are salvaging what they can. Basically every essential I have clothes, stuff where I need just to go to work, and just every essential I need right at this point in time just to get me by. His apartment destroyed after the EF3 tornado ripped through Jefferson City. Ramsey hid inside his bathroom as high winds rattled his unit. It's indescribable how much fear was going through me, honestly. It was the fear of not knowing whether or not I'm going to come out of this alive or whether or not I'm going to just be torn apart or just, you know, be thrown miles away from here. Video from SkyZoom 4 captures the devastation from up above. People inside this apartment complex forced out of their homes. It's not livable. Stuff is everywhere. Glass, the roof, shingles. The playground's almost in our front yard. Looks like a war zone. Looks like a bomb just went off over here. I mean, the glass and every window is out over here. The tornado, a reminder of the power of Mother Nature and the strength of this community. It's heartbreaking, but I feel the community can rebound pretty strong here. I mean, Jeff City's pretty strong. Really everywhere you look, there is just destruction. You're looking at a picture frame right now. That is just one thing that we've seen that's really uh, made an impact on us. Just little things that people are missing or things that are destroyed. Take a peek back behind me. You can see all of this brick metal siding, just massive, massive damage here. We spoke with two friends who lost everything in their apartment. You'll hear from them coming up all new tonight on News 4 at 5. But for now, I want to send things over to my colleague Ray Preston. He is just a couple blocks from where we are. Hey, Ray, what do you see? Well, right now, you could say we're dealing with the aftermath of a ruptured gas main. For about 10 or 15 minutes, there was a very loud hissing noise. We could smell the gas where we are. They had to clear everybody out of this cleanup zone. But a few moments ago, we could see or hear that the hissing had stopped, and they're letting folks back in. We want to give you some perspective, though, as to where we are now. You can see the state capitol building dome with the scaffolding and tarps wrapped around it for renovation. Well, then you come this way, there's a governor's mansion. You keep coming east, and that's where we are right now. So as you look down East Capitol Drive, you can see a good three or four block stretch of homes and buildings with extensive damage. This is also near the old state prison. Now, it's a historical complex that opened in the 1830s and was in use until just 15 years ago. It's now open to the public for tours. The tornado took out a huge stretch of the brick wall here. The rock wall 
all the way through here and I don't know how far, 30, 40 foot on the other side, but yep. You thought it was pretty solid, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been here, I don't know, 125, 130 years. It shows you the power of these winds. For right. Tonight. Yep. Pretty awesome. Now, we're also told this part of Jefferson City is considered pretty much an up and coming neighborhood. A lot of older stately buildings being rehabbed, some still waiting to be rehabbed. A woman who works here in a co-op took us inside her building to show us some of the damage. We'll bring you that story coming up at 5 o'clock. Reporting live from Jefferson City, Ray Preston News 4. Ray and Emma, thank you. We'll see you again at 5. We have been gathering and monitoring video coming out of Jefferson City all day. And this right here, some of the most dramatic images that we have seen. This is from a car lot. You see the tornado picked up a number of vehicles, dumped them on top of each other. And just in that one car lot, we're guessing there's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. The widespread damage hit many neighborhoods around Jefferson City pretty hard. News 4 meteorologist Megan Danahay toured one of those neighborhoods this morning. She tells us she saw sporadic damage. Roofs were torn off of some homes, but not off of others. She also visited a well-known furniture store in the city that sustained major damage. I didn't realize how emotional it would be to see the devastation in this town and everything tore up and things gone that have been here forever, um, just like this building behind us. Uh, Tennyson's furniture is a Jeff City icon. Um, my mother still talks about her furniture in her home that she bought in the late 60s from Tennyson's. Uh, it's just devastating to, to see the damage. Eric Powell also tells us he's lived in Jefferson City his whole life. He says the city will come together, they will support one another, and they definitely will rebuild. Today, Sky Zoom 4 took an aerial tour of some of the hardest hit areas in Jefferson City, and the view from above will definitely stop you in your tracks. 12 hours after a tornado barreled through Jefferson City, Sky Zoom 4 captured folks rummaging through what's left of their belongings. Here we saw two people walking around the overwhelming mess on their top floor as they no longer had a roof. In fact, we were able to see right inside several homes as entire roofs were ripped off and everything inside just thrown all over the place. Uh, this is where they have all the destruction and then there are still books on the shelves. That's just crazy. Photojournalist Mark Griffin was also above an apartment complex in Jefferson City that no longer had a roof. The navy blue and gray couches on both sides of your screen seem to be the only things that didn't get thrown around. Yards in this neighborhood are littered with debris as well as personal belongings that were once inside the family's homes. And this is what it looks like near Highway 54, close to one of the city's major thoroughfares. So much destruction to a gas station, a fast food restaurant and other nearby businesses. The storm forced major changes for the state track and field meet. It was supposed to start in Jefferson City tomorrow, but had to be moved because, of course, the storm damage. News Force Paige Holsey joins us live after talking with local teams. This impacts more than 2,000 high school student athletes. For months, they have been working toward the state championship at Jefferson City High School. But take a look at that venue today. This is Atkins Stadium. The roof was ripped off the press box. Early this morning, Missouri State High School Athletic Association officials had to make the call to suspend the two day meet because of so much damage there. But just within hours, they came up with a plan B. Now all meets will be Saturday. Class three will compete at the University of Missouri's Walton Stadium. Class four will be at Washington High School and class five will head to Battle High School in Columbia. The meets were split into three different locations, so everything could fit into one day. Today, local teams scrambled to change transportation, lodging and training plans. But here's one coach's message to his athletes. You've trained for this. You're ready to go. Don't don't worry about the change in schedule, but also keep all of the, the, the victims down there in their, in their prayers. Coming up on News 4 at 5, hear from some of those local athletes as they mentally prepare for this change and hear why Misha still rushed to fit all of this into this weekend. For now, we're live in the newsroom. Paige Holsey, News 4.